Okay, so um, good afternoon, everybody. And um, thank you very much, Carmen, for the lovely introduction. Um, as uh, she said, I am a, a newcomer to Angular. I have been uh, working with AngularJS for two years. And then I spent um, about a year ago, I started learning Angular on my own, doing some projects. And um, I um, came across structural directives not too long ago, and I got really excited about um, about what I discovered about structured directives. So today, I would like to share what I have learned with you. Um, just before we begin, um, I would like to really say thank you very much to the NGBE core, uh, the team members for such an amazing hospitality they've given me and for inviting me to come and talk here today. So thank you very much. It's really an honor to be here. Um, okay, so um, just um, before we start, um, would you give me a show of hands, people who have been using structural directives already? Yeah, so we have a few people. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so if I, I'm really interested to hear from people who are uh, using structural directives in the projects on how they are actually using it. So if you want to find me afterwards uh, and share with me uh, how you use it, that will be really, really nice. Okay, so um, why structural directives then? Um, so how many of you know that ng4 and ng if are actually structural directives in Angular? <laughs> That's like pretty much everybody, right? So um, ng4 and ng if are built-in structural directives provided by Angular. And if you can imagine like something like this we use all the time, we, um, you know, like how can we we couldn't do without ng4 and ng if in writing our component templates. So, um, but if you uh, doing something like ng4 and just being able to loop over a collection, uh, an array, and be able to render the template which we provide inside it and um, have an instance for that um, each item and provide the context for it. That would take quite a bit of code if we were to write it um, ourselves without ng4. And um, same with ng if, it's really, um, you know, we, we are basically conditionally displaying a set of markup. Um, and if you think about it, the, the component template at uh, <coughs> development time, it is, um, it is static. So how is it that we are able to you know, conditionally at runtime, be able to render uh, some markup or to to remove it. So um, behind the scenes, we have. Oops, sorry. <laughs> we'll skip that one. Behind the scenes, we have quite a bit of things that are is happening, um, which the um, structural directives just give us in a neat syntax with the asterisk, uh, which is a, sh a synthetic sugar for what happens behind the scenes. So Angular would wrap the div which has got the structural directive placed on it in a um, ng template. And, um, um, you know, so if we are, if, if we want to have something like usually the, the, the markup we put in our um, component gets rendered, right? So it just um, um, it gets rendered when the component is loaded. So if you want to keep something in a markup which won't get rendered until it's, uh, at some point we programmatically decide with some logic to display it, we would um, need something to hold this markup um, so that is what Angular gives us with ng template. It's a way to um, it's a way to keep um, some markup that um, we can instantiate later. And um, so, in order to in order to display it to, or be part of the view, this has to be inserted into the view. So um, 
what we have available as one of the tools is view containers, which is uh, the way we insert a bit of markup, which is like like fragment of markup, an embedded view into the main view, into the component view. So that's what we will be talking about then. Uh, just have a quick look at what views are and uh, view containers, and then how do we create structural directives. And in doing that, so we will look at the microsyntax, the uh, context object that the um, directive provides to the template where you can declare the template um, input variables, etc. So, um, as you know, our component doesn't just um, include a native HTML, but comp uh, the component template doesn't just include native HTML, but components, directives, pipes, and data binding. The templates get compiled by the Angular compiler and um, gets turned into like instructions to the rendering engine on how to, how to render these at runtime. So we can visualize it uh, in something like this. This is kind of more just a diagram representation of, um, of what I've said. So we have the component templates, which uh, the compiler compiles it into a data structure. We call this data structure, uh, it's, a v it's called view data structure, which has got nodes and component instances. And um, uh, this is basically the instruction to the renderer on what will uh, get rendered at runtime. And the change detection also runs on this view data structure. And um, as we know, the Angular is not just a, um, it's not just a um, application, it's framework for building web applications. Um, you can build Angular applications for multi-platforms. So um, uh, instead of using the DOM API uh, to manipulate DOM and to um, you know, add and remove um, elements, uh, we use the tools provided by Angular framework to query the views, um, to change the view structure. So what are uh, some of the tools we have available? Um, we have template reference variables, which I think everybody's familiar with. The, the hashtag you can just place on an element, and um, it will g um, an element in your component template that is, and that will give you a reference to that element, um, uh, unless uh, you can modify it also with um, assigning it a directive like ngform does, where it is the the reference is then the ngform, but Angular will infer uh, what type that should be from the element you place the tag on. So if you put it on the normal HTML element, it will be an element ref. Um, if you put it on a component um, element, by default, you will get a component instance, the, the component instance. Um, but we, yeah, and um, if you put it on um, a ng template, you will get an uh, ng template ref. So, okay, so that's template reference variables. We have view query, which lets us query the um, elements in our component template. And we have um, uh, decorators like view child, view children to do that. Um, okay. And uh, view containers is another tool that uh, we have uh, for manipulate uh, from Angular for actually changing the structure of the um, of the view. So yeah, view container is a tool provided by Angular that lets us safely modify the structure of the component view. So then it can be rendered on um, whichever platform you're building for. Okay, and um, right, so we have uh, the, the view container is uh, actually represented in the code 
by View Container Ref, which has got the API to um, create embedded view, to create a component, to insert, move, delete, uh, or remove rather, clear, and there are some other handy um, methods to be able to work with the items you have placed in your view container. So uh, if we can just imagine our view container as a, um, uh, as a box, I suppose, or a container, if you like, which is attached to an anchor element. So um, we need an element in the static HTML in, in the component template, which will then become the, comp uh, the container which you can place more views into. So that these more views you place into that will be decided programmatically, uh, so dynamic views. Um, okay, so um, although any element can be a view container, uh, ng container is a great candidate as it doesn't create any extra markup. It is a group. It, it sort of like provides a grouping of element that doesn't and also doesn't interfere with the styles or layout because it gets rendered as a comment. Um, and um, Angular IO the docs describes it quite nicely to say it's similar to uh, like your curly braces in JavaScript, which provides a block. Uh, so it's like the block for your HTML. Um, a view can have many containers as well. So you, you don't, I mean, if you imagine like the ng-if, ng-4, we use many of those in our component template. So each time we place them in our template, we're creating a container. So we're already using many containers in our, in our um, in our code. So um, there are two kinds of views which you can insert uh, into your container. So uh, one is the host views, which is um, created using component factories. Um, so you know you define the, the you declare it in, as an entity component and use a resolve factory. Uh, resolver to get hold of the component factory and you can um, create your host view with that. Um, and the second sort of view you can create is the embedded view, which is using ng templates. So, um, I mean, as we're talking about structural directives, so that's um, uh, structural directives is to do with ng templates, right? So, um, and embedded views. So, um, we need to look at uh, what. Is, so, yeah, we we want to look at how what embedded views are and how we w can create them. Um, and before doing that, we can we need to look a bit closer at ng template and at um, view queries. So. So what is ng template? It's, um, it's basically like, um, you can think of it like uh, the HTML template tag, which you know lets you keep um, a fragment of content and it just stays there and doesn't get rendered. It's not part of the document till it's created and then it's added, attached back to the body. So um, ng template is kind of, it's what Angular gives us. It's a special HTML tag. Uh, which Angular gives us, which um, uh, the content gets compiled, but it is not rendered till till the view is created and inserted into a container, and then it becomes part of the the component um, view. And ng template itself, it gets rendered as a comment. So um, to Template ref is code representation. It's a reference. Uh, it's a class that represents ng template that can be used to uh, to instantiate embedded views. So it has a v uh, quite a simple API uh, with an element uh, which is which is the um, 
anchor element and I think in this case it, it will just be the uh, comment element because the um, anchor element for ng template is a, a f uh, yeah so the anchor element is actually ng template which gets rendered as a comment so um, and the create embedded view lets you create a view but um, it doesn't insert it into a container, so you won't actually see. So if you use the create embedded view method of template ref API, um, the view, you won't see it rendered because it's only just created. So you'll still need to use view container ref API to actually insert the view. So uh, we'll, we'll um, see it soon that um, view container ref API, the create embedded view method actually uh, creates and inserts it at the same time, so it's better to use that. So um, template ref, yeah. So uh, one cool thing about template ref, it's it's a reference, right? So you can pass it into um, you know as uh, properties. You can return it from a function. You can pass it into function. So it is um, it, it it can be passed around. So, you know, uh, one cool thing, uh, I don't know if you've had a look at the ng um, if code, uh, the, the um, well, you, you probably have used the else part of ng if, right? So we pass in the template there. That's an example of um, passing in a reference into input. So, okay, so, if we have a quick look at view queries as well, um, the basically view child, view children, decorators, letters, query, the elements in our view, and the, it takes two parameters. And uh, just a reminder that uh, the content that we put inside the template in our component, that's the view children. And when we are trying to use that component and we put content inside the open and close brackets, that's the, the projected children, so that's content children. Okay, so um, uh, there are three simple steps to creating an embedded view. Uh, so first of all, we place, uh, we place an element which is going to be the container, so the anchor element. Um, and so I've used ng-container here, and we put a reference variable uh, to be able to get hold of that container. And then uh, in this example, I have got the uh, template, the ng-template is in the same view. So we've got a reference, um, template reference variable on the ng-template and on the ng-container so we can get hold of it from our, from our class. So <coughs> then, basically, um, to create the container, we would use the view child query and pass in the template reference variable as the first parameter. And then, um, usually, when, when we get hold of a component right, with view child query, it'll return a element ref. So in this case, we don't want to use the element ref, uh, reference of this element. We, we want to use it as a container. So we have a second parameter in view child, uh, which lets us basically just put an object with read and the token we want. So we want to get the view container ref of this element. Um, and uh, we do the same with the template ng template we just um, basically the ng template the angular knows that it's a template because of the element it's placed on so it will return a template ref by default um, to be more explicit if you prefer you could use the read and then template ref sort of syntax as well so um, right so now we've got a um, we've got a container, we've got our template. So then we basically just use the view container ref API uh, from our class 
and the then called create embedded view, passing in that template. Um, we will see a bit later on uh, as well that uh, there are, so the create embedded view method takes three parameters. It takes the template uh, reference as the first parameter, and then you can pass in the context as well as the um, index, which is the position where you want to insert this uh, view in your container. Um, and by default, it'll just be inserted as the end, at the, um, yeah, as the last entry in the container. So, and um, right, so this will create the view and it will get, um, uh, the, the embedded view gets rendered as a sibling of its anchor element. So what we did is like manually create, we manually got hold of um, um, a container and created a view with it from our component class. So you're probably thinking that, you know, we don't want to put that sort of logic in uh, too much code in our component class. We, do, we have like a handy way from Angular to, for this sort of one-off case where we just uh, want to, we have a template and we want to just instantiate it in some um, position, we can use the ng-template outlet directive, which is provided by Angular, um, to basically uh, place on a container and give the value t of the template. And of course, you're able to pass in context as well. So um, structural directives, uh, more simply, basically there's two parts to it. It's the ng template and the controller class. And then the, the controller class will implement the logic for this, uh, for this structural directive. So, um, as, as uh, you know, like, so, okay, so the um, directive will get placed, the structural directive will get placed on a ng template, right? So, um, the directive class, then through dependency injection, has available this ng template. So we can ask for the template reference of it and also the view container reference of the ng template. So in this case, the template is acting as a container as well, and it holds a view that it will render. So uh, there are means to communicate between your directive class and your ng template. Um, so, basically, in your ng template, you can have template input variables and binding keys. So, template input variables are what you say, uh, let, and then the variable name. Um, and it'd be let dash variable name equals something. And the binding key, uh, we will have a look at a little bit later. So. Um, it's basically in the in the case of ng4, for example, you have uh, ng4 um, equals some like item of item. So the off is the binding key, which the directive controller class has got the matching like input property, which th so that is us passing the um, the an input property into the directive class. So if you prefer to maybe look at that in a table form, I have that. And, or in code form, it looks something more like that. So, um, okay, so, right, so there's, um, there's, um, the, the, so as we said, they, uh, there is, um, Okay, so the directive class provides, a, it creates a context object. It's basically an object and you can have dollar implicit uh, and assign a value. And then you can, uh, you know, basically this is uh, declaring all the different variables that will be available to the ng template in a 
context object. And um, on the template side, each of them, uh, each of these have a matching declaration. So we have let, for example, um, I have got let URL. So your main, your main, um, your main variable often, you, you can just put it as the implicit because you want uh, the user to be able to uh, describe it how they like. And the rest of them are more sort of specific information you want to share from your um, directive class. So the, the user the template will have to know what these, direct, uh, these variable names are. So that's why we're able to just say let and then not assign it to the matching object property from the control uh, from the context um, and then uh, the the template input variables is available to the template um, markup which it holds to be able to use that in its markup so we can provide uh, typing to the context uh, objects and this is um, what ng4 context looks like um, the um, class and uh, so it, that's why we are able to you know ask for um, odd or last and even etc because it's there in the context and it's what the uh, directive class makes available to the template and uh, so yeah basically we're using the context um, oh, so so the template ref, you know, it takes uh, the way you type it is you provide the ref, uh, provide the um, type of the context it will hold. So, okay, so then we have the input properties and the binding keys. So. This is like the communication between the template and the directive class, right? So um, input properties are something like, um, so it's, it's easy to look at ng if, I suppose, um, in this case. So um, you can have, so the then, the word then here is there is a matching input property on ng if class which basically gets appended to the name of the directive so the name of the directive is ng if right so and then the key gets capital so the t becomes capital t and you append that so it becomes ng if then and that's the input property of uh, ngif class. And so the same with else, it is ngif else is the input property. And um, ngif is uh, like, it's um, the name of the, uh, name of the directive as well as assigning a value to it uh, straight away, so. Um, yeah, so I don't know if anybody's used uh, uh, ng if in this way before, where you don't provide the markup which uh, w within the code uh, inside the div, but you have your markup in separate templates, and so you use you would um, pass it in as the then and the else. Okay, so um, basically um, the. Um, all this is uh, what's happening behind the scenes with the asterisk syntax, right? So um, we have so to, to so we have asterisk and then the name of the directive and then equal to and then a string. So all all these information, all these um, keys and um, context or variables go inside that string. One of the mistakes that I kept making in the start is I, uh, so when you have something like index equals, so you're used to putting, you know, uh, things in string when you're assigning a value. So I would put a string inside a string, and that 
uh, is not correct. So everything sits in this one string, and that's um, and uh, the micro syntax that um, uh, Angular provides. So it gets passed, and then um, let gets appended with um, a dash, and then the name of the variable, um, and Perhaps this is better to see it in this way. So, <laughs> so what happens is that um, off will get appended to ng4 and becomes ng4 off, and then that's what we're assigning the value uh, to. So the ng4 of class has an input property called ng4 off, and it will receive this values, uh, which is, you know, an array that we're passing in. So, I think that's, uh, so that's pretty much all I have in terms of um, how to work with structural directives. I kind of ran out of um, time and didn't get into how do you create one of your own, but um, uh, some of the takeaways that you could have from this is um, uh, structural directives are quite a powerful feature of Angular. Um, and we can create our own structural directives. And uh, I was struggling to sort of think of um, use cases or, or really cool examples of how, of uh, what is a use case for a structural directive. And uh, Sam, who is one of the um, core uh, team members here at, uh, that's him, <laughs> has suggested to me uh, a couple of use cases that he uses in his work, which is ha has permissions. So you have a um, structure directive called has permissions, which takes care of all the logic you need to, um, you know, decide whether some a user can see a bit of um, code, like some some markup, right? Some view, and the Directive. Since it's a class, it's a class. It's a directive. You have the um, you have the um, lifecycle hooks, and you're able to inject services into them. So you can create quite powerful solutions to you know make uh, to do things like that. To make has permissions or has features is another example. And if um, somebody doesn't have the features, alternatively, they could have this else part and show another view. And uh, all that, you can imagine, would be so much simpler to just put it in a structural directive and put it in the component template. Then the component template stays quite semantic and quite declarative. Um, and a couple of examples I got from Alex uh, Rickaber's talk uh, was using it as a side view, uh, side nav. So you have like your um, main menu, main navigation. So depending on what route you're on, you could have a side nav, which is decided by the, the route you're on. So um, that structural directive can provide a nice solution with that. And um, example he used with um, to do a structural directive for Carousel, uh, it's quite interesting because uh, there is no, it's not a dynamic, like you're not creating this bit of um, view dynamically. It's, uh, you could have implemented this using a component as well. But what this allows us, if we uh, have a structured directive for a carousel, for example, it allows us to just um, implement the functionality of this, uh, what should happen, and let the user uh, decide on how it should look. So the view is, f um, you know, uh, the user has control over the UI of it, and you just provide the functionality. So that could be one use case for structural directives. So that is all I have, and this is thank you to uh, Alex Rickabo and uh, Sam for contributing to my, to my talk, and thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much, Ashnita.